My name is uh, Patrick, and I'm originally from Port Leash, and uh, grew up behind the prison there, as I said last week. And, uh, you know, uh, I was in a kind of a prison for many years of my life. I had a, had a gambling addiction. And, uh, you know, when you have a, an addiction, uh, you end up depressed. But uh, unfortunately, I ended up suicidal out of the addiction. And I didn't know how to get off uh, the addiction, you know. And I had to, because um, we're talking about the cause of Christ, about telling people. But I had to take a boat to England, a train to Dover, a boat to Belgium, and then a train to Stuttgart, Germany, for someone to share the gospel with me. And I don't know about you, but I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair that people have to go and uh, have to leave their country, leave everything, just to hear what we take for granted here at Lighthouse every week. And uh, we're going to go to Brazil, and you know what? Not everybody in Brazil knows the Lord, and that's why the Lord is sending us to go and tell them. And so as we look at the cause of Christ, uh, just open your heart, ask God, just God, you know, just challenge me. Uh, give, give me your concern uh, for the lost. You know, we have to remember that we were lost ourselves once. Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. And you have to always remember that, but by the grace of God, we will be lost too. And we have to make that commitment to give and to go. And we have to be confident that the Lord goes with us. And that's what we're going to look at today. And so we're in this last uh, week of our series on Devoted. And uh, again, it's like, it's really for the church, it's for us just to, because, you know, what it, it's going to do and what it's doing is it's just challenging our understanding of what it means to be a follower of Christ. And sometimes you know, we need that challenge. We need to be reminded about, about the basics. Uh, you know, Michelle and I, we just celebrated 28 years of marriage yesterday. And, uh, you know, so... so and, uh, you know, so Saturday morning, he said, this is what I want to do. I want us to watch a video on marriage. And so that's what we did for an hour. Because, you know, she really takes our marriage serious. And she wants me to take it serious. And she said, okay, we need to go back to the basics. So, we, so this is a series on, on basic stuff. And it's just, you know, we're, we're looking at four areas, you know, of, of real devotion uh, that we can apply to real lives, right? And so just to recap, because we've looked at three already, you know, we, we talked about a devotion to character, right? Where a follower of Christ is devoted to the character of Christ. Then secondly, devotion to consecration, that, you know, we're devoted to be, to be holy, to be, to be separated uh, for Christ. And uh, we had the young guns bring that a couple of weeks ago. And they talked about some of the challenges, you know, of, of you know, just being separated for Christ in school. But, you know, it, it's a challenge in work. It's a challenge in our home. It's a challenge in our, in our neighborhood, you know, because if, if it wasn't a challenge, you know, we'd have to really look and say, I'm a really a follower of Christ. And then uh, last week we looked at a devotion to communion, you know, that we're devoted to a life with Christ. And today we want to look at our, our last one, and that's a devotion to the cause of Christ. You know, you and I were born on purpose, and we were born for a purpose. And the two greatest days in each of our lives are, one, the day we were born, and secondly, the day that we discover why we were born. And we want, to look at, we want to look at, you know, why was I born? Why did God reach down and touch me? Why did God put Lighthouse Church in existence? And so we want to look at these things. So just to recap, well, what does it mean to be devoted? Okay, well, we, we know that to, to be devoted is to, is to love. Okay, to be devoted is to be loyal. Uh, to, to be devoted is to be enthusiastic about things so that that's you're devoted to things you love you know actually uh you know i remember a story of someone said about you know really struggling with something in their life and and they wanted to give it up and uh, you know this person just in wisdom said you know the first thing you got to do is just admit to god you love it 
Okay, because we always do what we love. We always do what we love. And so, you know, because the, the thing about uh, devotion and how powerful it is, is that, you know, devotion, it, it, it shapes our self-image. Okay. You know, your abilities, my abilities, you know, our appearance, our personality, all these things are being shaped by the things that we're devoted to. And not only does it shape our self-image, but it, se- it sets our life's direction. You see, you and I follow what we're devoted to. What we're devoted to does not follow us. We're devoted, we follow what we're devoted to. And if we follow Christ, if we follow Christ, see the secret of the Christian life is to just follow Christ. Because if we follow him, he's going to change our character. He's going to change our consecration. He's going to change our communion. And he's going to change our cause because he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the tension is, you know, who we are and where we're going is directly related to what we're devoted to. And so we're going to look at what it, does it mean to, to be devoted to the cause of Christ? What does it mean? And so obviously, you know, we're going to look at the, at, the, at the scriptures. And we're going to look at this portion of scripture in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And it's interesting because uh, I'll tell you a bit more about Matthew. But just to say that this portion of scripture is the very last words recorded in the gospel of Matthew. It's the last words he records of Jesus. And your last words are usually your most important words. And so we're going to look at this and let me just read it. It's out of the gospel of Matthew. Then I'm just going to give you a little background on Matthew and and how this kind of all relates to the cause of Christ because it answers what is the cause of Christ. But Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20, it says, it says, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told him to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Just a little context here on Matthew. Matthew was one of the 12 disciples. But before he was a disciple, he was a tax collector. And so he worked for the Romans. And so basically he he took taxes from his own people. And so he was despised by his people. But what changed his life was he was loved by Jesus. And Jesus called him, and Matthew followed him. And not only did Matthew follow him, but Matthew, Matthew wrote about him. And he writes to his fellow Jews, you know, people who despised him. See, that's, that's when you know you're transformed. When the people that despise you, you now love. And, uh, you know, you might be in a situation today and, you know, people that you grew up with because we've all had challenges in life and people have hurt us. You know that you're a true follower of Christ when now you look at them and now you love them. And so Matthew now loves these people, you know, that despised him. And so Matthew is trying to reach his own people, just like we're trying to reach Ireland. And, you know, so he's got a, a, a theme. He, he's, got, he's got things he wants to say that are pertinent to his people. And so what, what he does in his gospel, uh, for example, he, he shows how Jesus relives the experiences of the Israelites. So just like they, li- they were in the desert, like they were in Egypt... Uh, he says, you know, Jesus was in Egypt. Jesus 
was in the desert. And so he, he shows how Jesus relives the experiences of the Israelites. And you know, that's, that's like us. You know, uh, we, want, we, want to, we want to show people a Jesus that lived, that experiences what we experience. And then he also obviously shows the people how Jesus fulfills the, the prophecies of the Old Testament. How he's the Messiah. And how he is, in a sense, a new Moses. Because, you know, it, there was no character in the Old Testament that meant more to the Israelites than Moses. You know, Moses was the one who got the law from God. Moses was, was the one that, that spoke to them uh, from God. And so Matthew deliberately, you know, kind of correlates Moses with Jesus. You know, Moses gave you the law. Jesus spoke the law. You know, um, Moses is the mediator of the old covenant through the sacrifice of animals. Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant through his precious blood. But there's this thing he does here in this portion of scripture because one, one of the the places that Moses is, is uh, you know, most known by is that he was always up mountains, right? He he go up a mountain to, to be with God. It was on the mountain that he 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 you know he got the Ten Commandments. And so, where does Jesus take his disciples to give him his great commission? His the marching orders is well. He says, "Let's meet on a mountain." And so. You know, that's just a, a kind of a thing that he does comparing the life of Moses with the life of Jesus. But another theme that's really big in the Gospel of Matthew is the kingdom of God. The rule of God in our hearts and through us into the world. And so he portrays Jesus as a king. And he introduces this new theme. This is kind of what we're looking at now. He introduced this new theme because this new theme is never mentioned in any other gospel. And that is the church. The church is only mentioned in the gospel of Matthew. And so what we discover here is that Jesus is the king who brings the kingdom. And it's through the church that God brings the kingdom is true, you and I. You know, it's not, God does not have a literal kingdom in a sense that you can, you know, a, a land, but he has a kingdom of priests, and that is you and I. Because, you know, the, the number one thing that matters, and it's God's singular mission, and that is people. God cares about people, right? And God wants his church to care about people. And so we want to look at, you know, what, what is it, what, how can I become devoted to the cause of Christ? Or how can I measure if I'm devoted to the cause of Christ? And we just want to look at three areas here. And uh, the first one is availability. God is looking for available people. We see in this portion of scripture that the 11 disciples show up. I know we probably want something more spiritual that, than that. But basically, it begins by you and I just showing up. You and I just saying, God, I'm available. You see, we provide the availability and God provides the ability, right? I just say, God, I'm available. I'm available for you. So what do, what do I make available to God? Well, there's three things that we need to make available to God. First of all, we have to make available our time. You see, that's the wonderful thing that we all have in common. We all have time. And if we say, well, I don't have time for God, it's not a time issue. It's a devotion issue because we always have time for what we're devoted to. 
And we call a person that has no time, we call them a no-show, right? And so we say to God, I make myself available to you. I give you time. Then secondly, God wants us to make available our treasure. Every one of us has treasure. We are a treasure. And a treasure is anything that we're devoted to. And so as Pastor Sam did this morning, we, t- we take an offering here each, each Sunday. Because an offering gives us an opportunity to take what is valuable to us, our money, and say, God, we want to separate some of that money to the cause of Christ. Because we can't go to Brazil without money. You know, this church cannot exist without money. And so you and I give of our money, give of our our treasure to God and say, God, we make it available to you because God is able to multiply and bless. But he can't multiply and bless nothing. And so God, you know, take my treasure. That which is precious to me, take that. I make it available to you for the cause of Christ. Then the third thing we make available is our talent. You see, every one of us has talents. And what we consider natural talents, God considers supernatural talents. And the wonderful thing about God is that he's made us all not only talented, but he's given us different talents. And it just says, you know, just give that talent to me. Make it available to me. So are we available to God? Because there's not even any point in going on if I say, well, I'm not available. You know, I, I got no time for God. I don't want to give any treasure to God. I, I, I don't. I don't want to give my talents to God. You know, I want to encourage you to visit a graveyard. You know, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, when you go to visit a graveyard, it puts everything in perspective. Because it, it challenges us to recognize that this life is very short. And only what I make available to God lasts forever. And so the first thing I need to just say, am I available to God? Have I given him time? Have I given him treasure? Have I given him my talent? And then the second thing is adoration. You know, it's an interesting thing in this portion of scripture. And, uh, you know, why did Matthew even say this? He's, but basically he says, you know, as we gathered there and saw the resurrected Jesus Christ, we worshipped, but some doubted. Do you have doubts? You know, as we talk about the cause of Christ, do you have doubts whether he's going to use you? Do you have doubts whether he's Interested in using you? Do you have doubts whether he can do anything in your life? You know, Jesus comes and he says, all authority in heaven and earth belongs to me. I want to just challenge us today. Is don't let doubt have the authority. Let Jesus Christ have the authority. Okay. Let it be his problem. God, I have this time I'm giving it to you. I, you know, I have this treasure I'm giving it to you. I have these talents I'm giving it to you. Don't doubt God. You know, we need to doubt our doubts. We need to doubt doubt our doubts, you know, and 
how did Matthew know that some doubted? Well, it showed up in their worship. And being a Christian means more than just being a fan who admires Jesus. Being a Christian is a follower who adores Jesus. A follower who worships Jesus. And the Great Commission is calling people from doubt to worship. It's calling people from unbelief to belief. This is what Jesus is challenging his, his disciples here. Will you believe and will you worship? You see, God is not looking for fans. Fans watch the cause. Followers do the cause. You know, we're, you know, I know some of the guys play sports, some of the girls play sports, you know. It, it, it's, it's better to be playing the game than watching the game. Fans watch the game. Followers, in that sense, play the game. And so, God challenges us to adoration. And then thirdly, he challenges us to action. He says two things, two actions. He says, go, meaning as you go, as you go everywhere, as you go to everyone, as you go every time. You know, Charles Spurgeon said this. Charles Spurgeon was an amazing pastor in um, London in the two, two centuries ago. And this is what he said. He says, every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. In other words, if we're not going, we're not devoted to the cause of Christ. As you go, everywhere, every time to everyone, remember that you represent Jesus Christ. And he says, as you go, make. Make disciples. What is a disciple? Well, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. He's someone who imitates Christ. And the purpose of our goal is to help people grow in becoming more like Christ. That's the purpose of our goal, is to help people to grow to become followers and more like Christ. You know, why did Jesus have to say go to these disciples? Well, there's a little bit of a context here because, you see, in the Old Testament, Israel was proud of the fact that they were God's chosen people and that God said to them that the nations will go to you. You see, when God chose the people of Israel as a special people, he not only chose a people, but he actually chose a place. He specifically put them in a certain location. And what he did was he actually put them on the crossroads of the then world. Because in the north you had, you had Persia and Mesopotamia, and then in the south you had Egypt, you know, the, the two greatest empires of that time. And he put Israel right in the middle. So when they traded up and down, they would have to go through Israel. And as they went through Israel, God said to them, you be my witnesses. So you don't, ha you don't have to go because they're going to come to you. But Jesus reverses that. 
He says, they're not going to come to you anymore. You have to go to them. We have to go. There's a change of plan. We have to go. You see, we go because we know that God, Jesus makes our lives better, right? Our lives are better because of Jesus. Do we believe that? That our lives are better because of Jesus? And God, Jesus makes us better at life. And everybody needs a better life. You know, if you go up to anybody and you say, would you like the best life? I don't think anybody would say, well, I'd like the second best or the third best. Or... No, everybody wants the best life. And what we say is, and what we believe, is that Jesus offers us the best life now. You know, when you look at it, an advertising, advertisement for any product, doesn't matter what it is, that product is communicating one thing and one thing only. And that is that this product will make your life better. That's the only thing it's communicating. And guess what? People think it works. People think this product makes their life better. And many times it does, but it can only make a life better for a very short time. But see, Jesus, he says... Not only do I make your life better, but I actually make your life better and better and better. Amen? It actually gets better the longer you serve God. And if it's not working for you, if you say, well, I've accepted Jesus as my Savior, but it's not really working for me. The problem is not Jesus. The problem is me. The problem is me. Am I really following him. And secondly, Jesus makes us better at life. You know, our character is better. You know, our consecration is better in, in, in the sense that, you know, like, you know, we're kind of set apart for things that are better for us. Our communion is better because of what Jesus does in, in our life. And our cause is better because every, there's so many causes out there. And we have, we have the best cause there is. We have an eternal cause that goes on forever and ever. And we're called to go and make people's lives better. So our main point from last week, up to last week, was to be devoted to Christ means that we're not only live like Christ and for Christ and with Christ, but now we're seeing that Jesus also wants us to be devoted to the cause of Christ. And so Jesus has defined what it means to be devoted to God. And so the question we got to ask ourselves, am I devoted am I devoted to God? Am I devoted to Christ? You know, am I devoted to him in character? Do I have the character of a servant? Am I devoted to him in consecration? You know, am I set apart for him? Am I devoted to him in communion? You know, do I spend time with him? Am I praying? Am I, am I soaping, doing the journaling, just looking at scripture and observing it and applying it and praying about it? You know, am I, am I devoted to him? You know, am I, am I devoted to his cause? You know, am I, am I available to him? You know, have I given him something that he can use. I want to finish with a verse that's found in John chapter 17. And it's verse 17, John 17, 19, um, it, 15 to 7 to 18. It says, this is, this is Jesus' prayer for you and I. See, we always, we always close our service with a prayer. But this is the prayer that Jesus prays for us. He says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world. That's what Pastor Sam talked about. You know, he could have saved us and taken us out of the world. 
but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And then he ends with this. This is his prayer for us. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. In other words, what he's telling us here, Jesus has sent us into the world so that we can tell others that God sent Jesus into the world. That's the simplicity of the gospel. It's that God sent Jesus into the world that you might have a better life, a life free from things that separate us from God, and that he sent them into the world not only to make life better, but also that we can live a better life. And maybe you're here today and, uh, you know, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. You'd say, you know, I'm not, I'm not devoted to, to Jesus. I'm devoted to lots of other things, but I'm not, I'm not devoted to Jesus. How, how do I get devoted to Jesus? Well, you just make yourself available to him. You say, Jesus, I, I make myself available to you. You know, you said you could take me and you can change me. I just, I just give you that. And so as we sing this next song, our, our concluding song, it's um, So Will I. And, uh, and so maybe we need to pray, So Will I Follow You, Jesus. Or maybe we need to pray, you know, So Will I. Be devoted to your cause, Jesus. So let's stand, and I'm just going to just close our time in prayer here. And then our band's going to come and just lead us in this wonderful song. Father, we just come before you today, and we thank you for the cause of Christ. We thank you that you came, Jesus, not only to bring us to you, but also to bring us to others with the good news that Jesus died for our sins, that we might have a relationship to you, with you. And I just pray, God, for our availability I pray, God, that we would make ourselves available to you. I, I pray for God, our adoration, God, that, Lord, that even in times of doubt, God, that we would just trust you, God, that we would recognize that you have all authority and we can, we can trust in that authority, that even when things look impossible, even when we look at this nation that is only 1% true believers, God, that we can say, you know, we can still believe you that you're not finished with this nation and that your our greatest days are ahead. And we just we just pray, God, for action in our life, God. We pray, Lord, that as we go, that you'd put in our heart, God, for people, that they would come to know you. And God, that you would help us, God. God, that you would help us to just make a difference in people's lives because you made a difference in ours. And God, we thank you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen.